Guys, welcome to Extra Talk today with another special guest, Sam Plummer. Sam, Hello, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> Um, so let me introduce you to our to our viewers a little bit. Uh, I have to look at my mobile phone because I really like your bio, by the way. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, no, it's a nice bio. And I just wanted to be also clear to all our viewers. So you're a passionate and inspiring sports journalist, uh, up and coming, I think, just started not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. no, um, no, no. Yeah, and uh, you write articles for all about Ajax. Actually, people who are yeah. familiar with Ajax on the Twitter pages, they know about all about Ajax. And also for a national league team called Kings League Town. Yeah, yeah, Kings Lynn. Yeah, Kings Lynn. I'm sorry, Kings Lynn Town. Oh, that's okay. And uh, you have your own YouTube channel as well. Um, I do, yeah. Football with Sam, it's called. Yeah, that's the one. So tell us a little <laughs> bit more about, uh, well, a little bit who you are, uh, why... Or how you became an Ajax fan? Because you live in the in uh, in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I became an Ajax fan when I was about uh, sort of 13, 14. So almost 10 years ago now. Basically, I think everyone growing up around me was supporting the sort of classic Man United, uh, Arsenal's, uh, Chelsea's, those sort of teams. And I really wanted to sort of break away from that. I didn't know who to support, but then. Um, a few years ago, I was going to Ghana, and on that trip, I stopped off in Amsterdam. And from that, in uh, Schiphol Airport, they have uh, the Ajax shop in there. And from there, I think I picked up a, a, like a jacket that I still have now somewhere laying around. And it sort of built up from that that I wanted to sort of break away from English teams. And my love for Ajax was really sort of built on. I've got a few shirts going on behind me. Uh, and my collection of Ajax stuff has really built up as well as I'm a passion for the club. So, yeah. So once you bought, once you bought the Ajax jacket, uh, you started also following a little bit more the Ajax team. Uh, I mean, which team was it at that point that you started watching and the, which players? Yes. Yeah, so, remember? Yeah, so actually the day before I was in the airport getting that jacket, Ajax, I don't know if you guys remember, just beat Man City 3-0 in Amsterdam. I remember. Uh, so it was, that. I mean, the classic sort of players at that time was like Christian Eriksen and uh, sort of Jan uh, Vertonghen, uh, Toby Aldevira, those sort of players were in the team. Uh, I don't know why, but my favourite player at the time was Danny, I don't know if I pronounced this right, but Danny Hewson. Striker, yes. yeah, yes. and um, yeah, it was just a few players like that that I really sort of had sort of fond memories of. Uh, so sort of looking back on that time, I thought they were class players. And uh, Tuolani Sierra, midfielder, um, you know, a few players like that sort of uh, really were players that I enjoyed watching. Sort of when I first became an Ajax fan. That's great. That's great. Everybody knows Papimento, of course. Uh, before we start, oh, yes. <laughs> before we start about today's um, topic, which we want to discuss. Uh, just a question about your YouTube channel, uh, maybe for the viewers that are interested. So do you talk about Ajax or are you talking in general about other football related stuff? Yeah, so I mean, the Ajax videos have probably done the best of all my videos so far, which which is always great to see. Uh, I love the support on that side of things. Mm -hmm. But it's really kind of all sorts of stuff. I, I've done a little bit on Ligue 1. Uh, the title race there. My uh, latest video was on the potential Beneliga. Uh, there's a few gaming sort of ones like uh, GeoGuessr videos as well. So it's really a lot sort of across different sort of topics and a few Champions League ones as well, which is something we'll be talking about today. Yes, absolutely. So the topic today, thank you for giving it a slight piece of the of the cake. Um, today we're going to talk about the new Champions League format. Uh, this is, of course, something that has been discussed for a few years now. And uh, it was funny, after the Super League, uh, being announced just a couple of days, maybe one day, two days later, the new Champions League format was uh, approved. Uh, we know that Van der Sar was one of the also um, in, very much involved in this new format. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of introduction about what is going to change. I think most of us already know, but just a brief highlight. And what I want basically from you, Sam, and also Papimento, I want your view on two things, basically. Is this good for football in general, your opinion? And second of all, how does this affect Ajax? Does it affect Ajax in a good way or in a bad way? What's your view on this? So let me start with the Champions League format. So we know that it's going to be uh, from um, 32 teams to 36 teams. 
there will not be any more uh, the pools that we have right now, so the different um, stages, but there will be basically everything put together and there will be 10 games, five games away, five games at home. They play against each other, one game only. So there will be no away and home game with the same team that we know as well. You will play against a team based on ranking. So the coefficient, uh, the UEFA coefficient of a club is still important. That doesn't go away. Uh, what will happen then is then after the 10 games, there will be a ranking from one till 36, from one till nine, I'm sorry, from one till eight, they will automatically qualify for the next round of the Champions League from nine till uh, 24, that's 16 teams. They will play against each other in a playoff to qualify for the next stage of the Champions League. And the last eight will basically just, you know, try again next year, maybe. So um, this is basically the format. What will happen is there will be, of course, an additional four teams, which is also a big difference. So those four teams uh, will be decided by one, uh, the smaller, the smaller Euro European team, there is a championship path, basically. And one of them, uh, there will be an extra ticket given for teams that qualify through that stage. Then there will be an extra wild card given to teams that do not qualify automatically for the Champions League. Uh, but they do end on a spot in one of the big European teams uh, that automatically give them access to uh, European qualification. Uh, whether that's Champions League or Europa League, that would give them, based on their club uh, coefficiency, if that's higher than another uh, team in another country, they will still get eligibility to play in the Champions League. And then uh, the number five, which is now France in the UEFA ranking, will get an additional ticket. And then there is a fourth one, and the fourth one was, help me here, almost there. Um, there will be, I think I think I know the fourth would be um, well I don't know anymore. Anyways, it's very complicated, but I think that's basically what will happen. Important to know there will be more matches to be played. Uh, that's very important. There will be a lot more matches to be played. Basically, not only in the pool or the group phase, but also including the playoffs. And also, if you get even further in the in Europe, um, the teams have to play much more. Second of all. This is, of course, all has to do with more uh, revenues, more money. And also, um, one of the Super League ideas was to have more competition and more teams playing against each other. And if you play 10 games, you're playing basically nine different teams, you know, because you're not playing home and away. So there will be a lot more diversity in terms of the teams that you play. And it will also, that's the idea, bring a little bit more uh, nicer games to the viewers. So... In a nutshell, I still don't know what the fourth ticket was, so I'm sorry for that. But we can we can continue our discussion. Sam, I want your opinion on the new Champions League format, and uh, let's talk about that first, and we'll talk about Ajax later. Yeah, sure. So first and foremost, I I'm undecided as to whether I like it or not, and the reason being is like we've seen this season with uh, the pandemic and everything just how crammed, packed everything has been trying to fit in the only six uh, games for the group stage. So imagine having another four more games. Like, where are you going to fit those in? How is that going to affect the players? And I think for me, it kind of worries me how it's going to affect us in the Eredivisie. I don't know how that's going to affect us in that. I think when you look at it on the other side of things, as uh, an English uh, person not living in uh, the Netherlands, it will give more of an opportunity to actually be able to go and see one of these Champions League games. So there is that kind of flip side of it where, OK, they are playing more games. Um, but, you know, as a fan, it's good because it's more opportunity to see your team against other so-called elite teams. I'm not too sure, you know, how they're going to decide who's playing who exactly at this moment in time. But um, it really depends kind of who you ask, because I think Eric Ten Hag won't be massively in favour of it because, because of the... Uh, the amount of games that they have to play, but for fans and uh, for the club as a whole, financially, uh, the idea is that it's going to make much more money, as you say, in revenue and uh, sort of match day ticketing and stuff like that. So it really depends on who you ask, really. Yeah, uh, I'm the opposite. I think it will benefit Ajax a lot, uh, just financially, and they're constantly uh, number one in the league anyway. 
So uh, it's going to be- benefit de- uh, them a lot. And uh, that's always good. I think also you're going to play more, not more, but tougher opponents. So it will higher up their level as well and give more opportunity for you to play maybe the Dutch Cup or something because it will be less of a priority, I think. Uh, but I do like the idea that we all know something had to change, right? More revenue. We saw with the Super Liga that uh, they promised so much more money. So uh, the UEFA and the FIFA couldn't stay behind. Um, I do like the format. I just think the whole league thing, that's the only thing that's concerning to me, will be very defensively in the beginning. Very, let me just get the points. Let's just sit back. Let's not do two crazy things to to go all overboard. Maybe we'll lose the game. So I think it's going to be very tactical in the beginning. And then we will see like at the end, seven, eight, ninth match, the, the excitement of like the teams that really need to and the other teams that just want to hold their position. So that's the only thing that's concerning to me. You guys are really saying a couple of interesting points. Um, let me start with Popimento. The thing is that um, you're saying that there will be uh, more games and that will be better um, for Ajax probably, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Look, I know also what Sam said, what he raised was very important. Uh, I, I know that Jurgen Klopp and uh, uh, even uh, Guardiola, they came and they said that the Super League is not something they're keen of, but actually the new Champions League format is also not something they're happy with. And I know also that Gundogan, uh, last week, a uh, player of Manchester City always also raised something. Uh, he, he tweeted basically and saying that we're all talking about the Super League, but what about also the new Champions League? You know, there is a cry basically for help coming from players and from the coaches. And Klopp really uh, also said that, you know, they're making basically plans and ideas and all these kind of things, but they're not asking the players. They're not asking the coaches. They're not asking anyone who's close to the football. So in terms of more matches being played, it's not something that is being embraced at the moment by players, coach, managers. And that's a strange thing. So basically, the UEFA uh, or the club, the club owners, they all want more. Basically, that's what's happening. That's what's also the idea behind the Super League. They want more, more revenues, more games, more everything. But the coaches and the players basically say, no, if you want a good level of quality of football, you don't have to raise the amount of games. You have to actually lower it. We have to protect our players. So what's going on here? And how do we have to view these kind of things? I mean, as a fan, how do you see this? Sam, you go first. Well, as a fan, I think I understand exactly what, like, as you say, Jurgen Klopp and that are saying, because um, I know obviously COVID has meant that we've had to fit in sort of more games in less period of time where that won't be so much as a problem going forward, but you're still having that same problem. You know, we we saw quite a few players ourselves with uh, kudos at picking up quite a serious injury in that period of time. And I think quite a few players as well uh, picked up injuries where it kind of damaged their progression this season. For me, I'd love to see players like kudos actually grow this season, but because of his injury, I mean, we haven't really seen him much since he returned. And I think, I can't, like I say I completely understand why managers and players are speaking out about it because, yeah, like as Papi say, it was it would be good financially for Ajax, but you kind of wonder about the development and the progression of the sort of first team players. Will they be halted by these new plans because there's just so many games going on? Well, for me, it's hard to talk about this in general, uh, Juan. And the reason is Premier League is uh, Premier League is a totally different league than uh, than the Dutch league for me. Look, uh, we had a tough this year. Okay, it's because of the Corona and we had different scheduling, etc. But if you look at the Premier League and the uh, and the League Cup and the FA Cup and they play Champions League, that's a whole different ball game. And they're already playing like thirty eight games in their league. That's totally different than what Ajax has to deal with, I think. So when, you know, you're talking about Gundogan, you're talking about all these Premier League players, yeah, they play a lot of matches, but that's not the same in La Liga or or in Italy or in uh, the Dutch competition. 
or in the Bundesliga. So, yeah, I mean, that's a whole different league and they play a lot of matches. So I understand their point. But even in the Netherlands, I would, I would also consider making a case that uh, there has been a lot of games being played. We don't have a second cup, uh, you know, like tournament, like uh, in, the, in, um, in the UK, for instance. We don't play 38 games. I agree with you on that one. But we also compare it. We have to make a comparison, a fair comparison. We, we cannot have the same bench as those, as those teams have. We don't have the financial power as those teams have. So maybe you can also counter argue that, okay, you know what? These teams, they play on a very much higher level and they have to compete and go all the way every week. And maybe Ajax doesn't have that. I mean, we have to be honest. There are a couple of games we play, especially against team in the lower end of the, uh, of the league, you know, like uh, without being disrespectful, but you know, like the Emmen, the Ado, Den Haag, the RKC, these kind of teams, we don't have to go in 100% at those games. That's, a, that's maybe the biggest difference that we have compared to the Bundesliga, the Spanish Liga, the Italian League, and the, and the Premier League, of course. So, but at the same time, if we're going to play more games, um, especially don't forget Ajax, okay, now we have a little bit more of a mix, of a balanced mix with older veteran players, but still we depend a lot, maybe three or four players in our team is always youth, um, at least. And you saw what injury can do to us. Yeah, yeah. But you also yeah. see, but you also see the best case I can give you this season is a wrench and timber. They even uh, came out and they said and they said that it took them a couple of weeks to get into the rhythm, you know, because they had to make the transition from the youth academy to the full squad to con like stamina wise and physically to be able to withstand and play 90 minutes the football that they have to play. Yes. So if we're going to extend that also in the Champions League, it is good maybe in one way that you get a little bit more resistance, you can learn more from the Champions League. But at the same time, it will be a big, maybe a big stretch for these players. But maybe you guys are, don't agree with me. I'm just saying what I think. Uh, may I uh, interject, uh, Sam? I just want to okay. say yes. that AZ, AZ, we played AZ this weekend, right? AZ didn't play for two weeks. While Ajax played... Thursday and they had to play as it on, on Sunday. So maybe if they start uh, performing as well, they will play the same amount of games as Ajax. Um, and still they're not able to, to compete. So there is a level of Ajax that the other teams are not able to, to get to because of so many games, because we have the youth development and they're playing those tough games and they're growing within a season. That's all I wanted to say about that. Sam, what's your take? Because uh, I can, I, I also wanted to actually say, look, yes, but we only played a couple of Champions League games. So looking at the old format this season, and I know I'm only looking at this season, but just, just to give you an idea. So Kudus got injured in the Champions League game. At the end of December, we didn't have a striker anymore. We were four, we were basically forced to get Haller in because Traore, a youngster, uh, Broby, a youngster, they all got injured at that that time during the winter break. So I was panicking, not panicking of, of course a lot, but they were thinking like, hey, we have to do something if we want to keep our first position in the league and be and securing our Champions League next year. So they go, they went out and bought Haller. And the reason you can buy Haller, of course, is because of the situation we're in financially and because of the Champions League and everything we have done in recent years. But what I'm trying to say is we only played six games. Now we're going to extend it maybe even double it, almost double it, to 10 games. Wouldn't this harm us in terms of injuries a little bit more, especially for the young players? Well, this is what I kind of think, you know, because obviously, as you, as you say, this season is different because of the pandemic, but this season will be repeated sort of year on year if we're having to play 10 games. Additionally, like, I appreciate what you say about um, in England, they obviously play more games domestically. But the thing is, um, there's not much of a difference in the early stages because obviously if you're playing week in, you know, if you're playing on a Sunday, then a Thursday or, you know, midweek at some point, it's still the same, all bar what, one or two games that the English teams will play in the League Cup. But in the first couple of rounds of the League Cup, most English uh, teams will play a second team. They'll play youngsters. They'll play 
players that won't be playing in the Premier League and in the Champions League. So it's it's something that I think for Ajax is a very serious problem, you know, in the same way that it is in the Premier League. Um, obviously, looking sort of beyond Christmas time, that's when you kind of see the difference because in England, uh, after the Champions League is done for the group stage, that's when England, you have so many games towards Christmas and New Year where Ajax will have a couple of weeks off. And so it's at that point where you kind of see that difference. But at the beginning, it's a little bit different because I still think uh, English teams will have the opportunity to rotate. And as you mentioned, they do have a stronger bench where we, you know, you'll see for us, we have to play the same players for each and every game, whereas in England, they can rotate and much easier. Yes. Yeah, my only concern specifically to Ajax is we know that they always start slow in a season. So this new format might be uh, <laughs> very tough for them. Um, we we kind of started like really getting in our groove in in the new se- like in 2021 and uh, before that it was it wasn't always great let me say it like that i mean class was playing six i think at the beginning um when he started when going 10 and and martina started playing and alvarez started playing then we started seeing really a form uh, develop so it took six months to get that <laughs> form how will it be if we don't start well? You know, you'd be out of the Champions League very easily and you won't have that um, fallback anymore going to the Europa League. True. There will be no fallback anymore in the new Champions League format. What do I do like, however, about the new Champions League format, I want to put it out there, but it's my opinion, is that um, even if you don't qualify and become, you know, like come in the first eight, there is always, there's still a very huge possibility for you to still qualify because you still got one chance to qualify against one opponent. And I like that concept, basically. There's always one more chance to make it happen and qualify for the next round. And basically what they're doing is only the last eight will not qualify. So it gives you more chances to, you know, like after the winter break, still be in Europe. And that's different than now. I mean, of course you can go to Europa League, but I I mean, in terms of going further in the Champions League, this might be also... Is, gives you a little bit more chance, especially for Ajax then, in that case. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather us be competitive in the Champions League than finish third and go through the Europa League stages, kind of like this season. So I definitely agree You know, with, with the Champions League. I mean, every Ajax fan dreams of sort of recreating what we have in the past and actually going far in the Champions League. I mean, 20, what, 2019 was special, but it could have been a bit better but it, either way it's much better in my opinion that doing something similar to that than going through and maybe getting to the final of the Europa League I think it has that sort of more special value than as you said the, uh, the Europa League does I must say the games against Roma I really loved I loved the game against uh, Lille. Lille it was yeah. also a great game I mean the only one was the young boys game that was an easy one but uh, the the challenge was there, and I love that. Yeah. And so now, I, if you don't even continue, you <laughs> you'll be out. So it will be just one one game a week. Yeah, that that's, okay. that's true. But still, you have already played ten games, right? I mean, it's not like true. you only play six now, and basically you could be done. Um, all right. So uh, coming a little bit more into the Ajax uh, topic, we already touched upon Ajax a little bit, but especially the financial part. Um, I was also thinking, let's say Ajax is becoming more and more dominant, which we're seeing already happening, and not only this season, but if you if you have a look at the last few seasons, you see Ajax is slowly moving away financially, but also in terms of the players they're, uh, they're buying in, et cetera, et cetera, from the competition. I'm not saying now that we already became the Bayern Munich. Uh, a lot of Dutch pundits already started saying that. I'm not going, going that far. But... What will happen is if there will be an increase in um, in starting price, which uh, I read that would be now it's 40 million, basically, if you start playing Champions League, but it will go all the way up to 70 or 90 million. So it will be double that. Um, look, the Dutch league is not the same as the Premier League or the Bundesliga or these kinds of teams. I mean, uh, all due respect, the Premier League is a league of, of its own in terms of prize money and TV rights, etc. But the difference in Holland is already pretty big between, uh, let's say, the top tier teams, especially Ajax and the lower teams. What will happen if if this goes through 
is that people that the teams that play Champions League and that might be Ajax um, and maybe a second team in the Dutch league if they qualify as well. That will, if you play one, two, three years, that will give you such a jump shot, basically, and you really pull away from the rest of the teams. That's my opinion. And I don't know if that's a good thing for the Dutch league in general. And I know, Sam, that you've been talking about the Beneliga. I don't want to talk about the Beneliga now, but I'm just saying that how do you think this will be in terms of Ajax in general, but also uh, compared to the other teams in the domestic league in the Eredivisie? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think it really depends, as you mentioned at the very beginning, you know, those four added teams, one of those could be uh, maybe an additional Eredivisie team. I'm not too sure. It, I think it depends on the coefficients, you know, uh, you know, when we get to that point. But it, it really depends on, you know, if we can get a second team in there. I know that I'm English and a sport Ajax, but I do also really want to see the progression of other teams in, in the Netherlands, like RZ and uh, PSV. Um, and it really sort of depends on if we can get a second team in there and maybe kind of distribute the wealth as such, not just distribute sort of across the other teams, but I like the idea that, you know, if we're going to be uh, getting so much money from the Champions League, that will maybe have like a trickle down effect and maybe benefit the rest of the teams in the league. But it's uh, it's really hard one to say, you know, until it actually comes through, you know, what, what it will actually have in terms of an effect on the other teams in the Eredivisie. But I must say that there is a new uh, league coming in, Conference League, which gives the opportunity for the other lower uh, tier teams to also get ex uh, some exposure in uh, in Europe and also get some prize money. I don't know how much it's going to be. I don't know if the Europa League is going to be more prize money, but I'm guessing it's going to all have the same format as Euro uh, as the Champions League. So there must be also more money coming in for them. Um, let's hope it does because I seriously sometimes wonder when I'm looking at Ajax in the competition, like it's too easy for them. Um, I mean, an AZ didn't, an, uh, yeah, an AZ didn't play for two weeks, for instance, should be making it Ajax so much more harder than what we saw last uh, Sunday. So, yes, yeah, last Sunday, yeah, yeah, right. All right, all right, guys. Um, look, we already touched upon a lot of points. Um, any final thoughts from both of you? Uh, for me, final thoughts. I think I think Pappy said it quite well. There, it really depends. You know, if the other teams in the Netherlands can make um, the most of the Conference League and the Europa League. Uh, to be fair, obviously for Ajax, you know, financially, this if it does sort of bring back the money, as you say, Juan, um, then it will have a massive uh, effect for us, it will maybe allow us to bring in better players or maybe of a higher standard, as well as uh, allowing us to develop players here without seeing them move on too early in their careers. So, it, it you know, it's such a hard one to talk about when it's a couple of years away. But, um, sort of, beside if you look at it on sort of base value for um, what it will bring to Ajax, and you like to think that it's going to benefit the club a lot more than what the current system is. Uh, the only concern, as I say, is the amount of games. But if it's bringing in that sort of money, then you hope that it's actually going to benefit the club much more than be a negative. But I want to say about the Bain and Liga and, and that that's, is going to be critical, I think. Um, just because that will enforce a better league. And with a better league, I think we can hold on longer to specific players that go now much sooner to uh, other leagues and that we can't keep. Like we were very lucky to keep Ziyech, Doni, uh, Nico Tayafico, Onana, those players for so long. And I think that's a reason for our success. But usually those players don't stay that long with Ajax because the league isn't that strong and they want to go somewhere else. So I think we should be positive about the Benelliga League as well going forward. Guys, I can feel it, man. I can. You want to subscribe. <laughs>